We're now going to consider work and kinetic energy for the rotational case. So we've considered this for the translational case before. It, we've seen the work kinetic energy theorem, which tells us that when we do work on a body, we change its kinetic energy. So the work done on a body is equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. And this holds as long as we have no non-conservative forces doing work. We've seen that we can calculate the work in this case using the integral of f dot dx where the limits on the integral are from the initial displacement to the final displacement. Now to start an object rotating we also need to do work on it. For the rotational case we can calculate the work done on the object as the integral of the torque d theta where the limits on the integral are from the initial angle, theta initial, to the final angle, theta final. We also end up with an analogous expression for the kinetic energy of a body. The rotational kinetic energy is given by a half i omega squared. So let's have a look at our simplest case now and show that the kinetic energy is given by this expression. So we're now considering the case with a massless rod with length r with a point mass of mass m on the end. We'll let it rotate and the mass is traveling around its circular path with some speed v. If we want to calculate the kinetic energy when the mass is moving with the speed v, we know that we can just use our kinetic energy formula that the kinetic energy is equal to a half mv squared. Now in this case, because it's moving around the circle, the speed, the velocity is given by omega r. So we can substitute that into our equation in place of v. So we've now got that our kinetic energy is equal to a half m and then omega r or squared. Now we can rearrange this expression to write this is equal to a half m r squared omega squared. But as we've discussed with our moment of inertia, the moment of inertia of a point mass is given by mr squared. So we can replace that with i. So our kinetic energy is now written as half i omega squared. Now this is just for the simplest case, but we can extrapolate from this case to all other cases as when we consider a continuous body, we just break it up into lots of little point masses and then we just sum them all together. So the same thing applies here and we have effectively shown that for any continuous object, the amount of kinetic energy is given by a half i omega squared. Let's have a look at an example of how we can use this equation now. So our question is, a disc of mass m, 2.0 kilograms, and radius r equals 0 0.10 meters, starts from rest. A hanging mass, m is equal to 1.0 kilograms, is released at t equals 0 seconds. Part a, what is the acceleration of the hanging mass? Part B, what is the angular speed of the disc 2.0 seconds after the mass is released? C, what is the kinetic energy of the disc at this time? D, how much work has been done on the disc? E, what is the kin kinetic energy of the hanging mass? F, has mechanical energy been conserved? Okay, so to answer part A, we should consider the forces which are acting on the hanging mass. So we've got our weight force, which is pulling it downwards, and then there'll be a tension force in the string, which is pulling it up. So we can use Newton's second law to write Ma is equal to the weight force, Mg, minus the tension. Now we can also consider the forces which are acting on our disc here. So we can use Newton's second law for rotation to write down an equation for the disc. So we know that the moment of inertia of the disc times the angular acceleration of the disc is equal to the 
torques acting on the disc and in this case the torque is caused by the tension force which is acting at radius r so this is equal to r t now because it's a disc we know that i is equal to a half m r squared and alpha is related to our acceleration through alpha is equal to a over r so we can simplify off some of the r's in this case this r will cancel this r and we've now got the equation rt is equal to a half m r a and so because there's an r on both sides those will cancel each other out and we end up with the tension is equal to a half m a so we can then replace this expression for tension here with the one that we've calculated from over here. So we've got this is equal to mg minus a half ma. We're trying to find this acceleration. So if we move all our acceleration terms onto one side, then we've got ma plus a half, this is a capital ma, it's the mass of the disc, is equal to mg. And so that tells us that pulling the acceleration out as a common factor and then dividing by what's left we can write this as acceleration is equal to mg over m plus a half this is capital m so this is now something that we can evaluate as in the question we've been given all of these so the mass of the hanging mass was one kilogram so we've got one times 9.8 over one plus a half times the mass of the disc, which was two kilograms. So we're doing 9.8 divided by one plus one, which is two. So this gives us 4.9 meters per second per second as the acceleration of the hanging mass. Now in part B, we're asked what is the angular speed of the disc two seconds after the mass is released? So in order to do this one, we'll need to consider our rotational kinematic equations. So just as we have v equals u plus at in the translational case, we have omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha t in the rotational case. Now we know that this disk starts from rest. So omega naught, the initial angular speed is zero. So we can solve for alpha because we know that alpha and a are related through alpha is equal to a over r so this is equal to a over r times t and we have just calculated a here the acceleration of the hanging mass is the same as the tangential acceleration of the disc here so this is 4.9 times 2 over 0 0.10 and so that is equal to 98 radians per second is the angular speed of the disk at the end of the two seconds. Now part C says what is the kinetic energy of the disk at this time? So we can calculate the kinetic energy using this is equal to a half i omega squared. So this is a half. Now because it's a disk, the moment of inertia is a half m r squared and then omega squared we've just calculated this is 98 squared so we've got a half times a half so that's a quarter times the mass of the disc which is two kilograms times the radius squared so that's 0 0.10 squared times 98 squared and solving this we end up with 48 joules now part D says how much work has been done on the disc. Now we could just go back to the work kinetic energy theorem and say well if this is its change in kinetic energy this is the amount of work. But that's cheating a little bit. Let's calculate it using our work is equal to the integral of the torque d theta. And the limits here are from theta initial to theta final. Okay so theta initial will take as zero and then we need to calculate the total angle through which it's moved in order to get our theta final. So in order to do that we can use our equivalent equation to s equals ut plus a half at squared which tells us that theta is equal to omega naught t plus a half alpha t squared 
omega naught, we've said the initial angular speed zero, so that's zero. So this is equal to a half times a over r, so that is our a is 4.9 over r, which is 0 0.10 times t squared, which is 2 squared. Solving this, we end up with 98 radians. So that's our final angle here. We also need to calculate the torque. So the torque is equal to the radius times the tension force. We don't have a value for our tension force at present, so we're going to have to get one. We can get one by looking at this equation here. So rearranging that equation to make tension the subject, we end up with tension is equal to mg minus ma. And so this is equal to mg minus a. This m is the hanging mass. So this is 1.0 times 9.8 minus a, which we calculated in the first part as 4.9. So this is equal to 4.9 newtons. So now we have the radius and we have the tension. So our torque is equal to 0 0.10 times 4.9, which is equal to 0 0.49 Newton meters. And this is a constant value. So we can now put this into our integral equation here. So our work done, we're going from zero up to 98 radians and our torque is 0 0.49 times d theta. Doing this integral, we end up with 0 0.49 theta, and that's from 0 to 98. And so this is equal to 0 0.49 times 98. The, when we substitute in the 0, this term disappears, so we don't need to subtract that off. Solving this, we end up with 48 joules. So that can make us happy because we the change in kinetic energy was 48 joules and now we've calculated the work done on this disk and that's also 48 joules and we were expecting these two to be the same and they are. Okay so part E now asks us what is the kinetic energy of the hanging mass? So we know that the kinetic energy is equal to a half mv squared so we've calculated the acceleration of the hanging mass in the first part. So we can use our kinematic equations to work out what V is. We can use V is equal to U plus AT. It starts from rest. The acceleration is equal to 4.9. The time is 2 seconds, and so this is equal to 9.8. So our kinetic energy is equal to a half times the 1 kilogram times 9.8 squared and solving this we end up with 48 joules. So let's just put that in the box there and now part F, just making some space here, has mechanical energy been conserved? So in this so in this process, the hanging mass is losing potential energy and that's being converted to kinetic energy of both the disk and the mass. So we'll need to calculate how much potential energy this hanging mass has lost. So we'll need to calculate mgh and to do that we'll need to know what height it's fallen through. So in order to calculate h, we can use our kinematic equation. S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. It starts from rest, so U is zero. And so this is equal to a half times 4.9 times two squared. Solving this, we end up with 9.8. And so our potential energy is equal to one kilogram times 9.8 for g times 9.8 for the height and solving for that we end up with 96 joules. So this is the potential energy that it's lost and that has gone into the kinetic energy of the disk 
plus the sorry the kinetic energy of the hanging mass plus the kinetic energy of the disk. So you can see 96 is equal to 48 plus 48. So this tells us that mechanical energy has been conserved.